right, everybody, I'm Mr. Ray, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about a couple of the AP uh, math courses that I teach. First of all, you're not actually here, so we can take that off. And hopefully next year, we won't be needing those, but no guarantees. So we'll just kind of see how that plays out. Uh, I'm specifically going to talk to you today about AP Calculus, uh, both AB, first year, and BC, our second year course. And I'm going to talk to you about our AP Statistics program here. Just give you a little bit of information about the classes so that you can make a good decision when you're looking at your subject selection sheet. This slide here is a, a little bit about both classes. I'll talk first about AP Statistics. Uh, in order to get into AP Statistics, uh, really what we need from you is a good solid Algebra 2 uh, background. Anything beyond that is, is nice, uh, and it's uh, important that you have a good background in Algebra 2, so we want to make sure you have a B or better in Algebra 2. If you've gone on in math since then, you honors Algebra 2 maybe, or pre-calculus, calculus, or even second year calculus, you're welcome to come and take statistics uh, as long as you have that B or better in Algebra 2. Statistics is not a sequential course, meaning it doesn't prepare you for our next course in mathematics the way like pre-calculus gets you ready for calculus. So it's important to remember that, you know, it's not going to satisfy any prerequisites for anything other than maybe uh, a higher level statistics course. Um, in this course, you are expected at the end to take the AP exam. Typically that happens in middle of May. Uh, this year is a little bit later because of the COVID uh, situation that we're in right now. Uh, your transcript will show AP course credit, uh, whether you take the exam or not. Uh, the decision to take the exam is really going to be up to you and your family to figure that out, uh, especially if you're going to college. Uh, it's, um, it's very fluid in terms of from school to school, their policies on AP credit are pretty different. So you'll want to make sure that you uh, look and research your specific schools that you're interested in when you're trying to decide if the AP exam is right for you. Unfortunately, currently, there are no college and the high school um, partners that are allowing us to teach AP statistics for college credit while you're here. Uh, I'm not sure why, because honestly, it's like a, it's like a sophomore level uh, stats class uh, when you go to college. So uh, they should do that, but then unfortunately, there are just no partner schools right now. On the other side of the screen here, I have my uh, calculus uh, column. Uh, calculus is a little bit different. It is a sequential math course, meaning uh, it fits in between the pre-calculus and the further studies in calculus. Uh, it's um, required that you have a B or better coming out of your pre-calculus here. And if you've had um, in the past a pre-calculus course, um, or if you're in pre-calculus right now, um, a B or better is really what you're uh, expected to have in order to be uh, recommended to take calculus. Uh, it's a very rigorous, fast-paced math course. Uh, and it is... Um, it's college level calculus for sure. So it's definitely uh, requires you have a good foundation in, in mathematics. Uh, again, you're supposed to take the AP exam at the end. Uh, the AB exam for first years, the BC exam for second years. Uh, there's some overlap. You notice it's AB and then BC. Uh, they do overlap quite a bit. Um, the first year exam, uh, you'll find that to be uh, pretty challenging your first year. If you do the BC exam, um, if you had a successful AB exam, uh, then uh, most people find the BC exam to actually be a little bit easier because there's a lot of overlap with the first year material. Doesn't mean it's an easy exam. They just find it to be a little bit easier than the first time they took it. Uh, again, your transcript will show AP course credit. Um, that's for both classes. Um, you can take the first year course um, for UW college credit. Uh, that's the new thing that we're announcing this year. Uh, we have partnered with SPSCC in the past. Uh, but we are moving our partnership to University of Washington, and we will be offering uh, college and high school. I think it's math 151 and 152. No, that was, sorry, that was SPSCC's numbers. <laughs> it's uh, 124, 125 numbers um, at University of Washington. And so it is, a, it is eligible for 10 credit hours. If you were to do well on the AB exam, you could also get 10 credit hours at the University of Washington. Um, you would get those same 10 credit hours if you did well on the BC exam. The difference is keep your grade up and you will get your UW transcript started. And these credits are guaranteed if you pay for them. These ones up here, you have to score well on the exam. I know it's going to be um, more expensive than the SPSCC credits. It's a lot more expensive than the AP exam. The exams are $100. These credits, uh, they haven't given me the final price for next year. 
Uh, usually it's around $400 per course. But I can tell you as a dad who has a son who is at UW right now, I would love to pay $400 to get five credits. Uh, those are super cheap credits when you look at how much it costs to actually go to the University of Washington and earn five credits. So uh, a, a bargain, and you can do it here, good old OHS, uh, and I think uh, is a nice opportunity for people who that, 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 that will work well for. A little bit about subject matter. Oops. Um, in statistics, the subject matter is pretty wide ranging. You know, uh, we, we study a lot of things with data. We study a lot of things with probability. And we look at lots of applications. And there are so many applications for statistics, from business and marketing to finance and social services, computer networking, medicine, uh, you name it. it. There's a whole lot of degrees out there that you can get if you go on into college. Uh, where you're going to need some sort of statistics background. I have um, many students, former students, who communicate with me and tell me how great it was to have had this opportunity in high school to, to get this background before they went on to college. Um, students who are in uh, at the UW School of Medicine have come back and told me, wow, all of my labs that I do for my medical school, they're really just stats projects, like the one we did when we were here. Um, I have students who are at uh, University of Washington School of Computer Science, okay, the Bill Gates School of Computer Science up there. They use a lot of statistics with what they do. Um, social scientists, I had a student go to university, uh, Western Washington University, and switch majors partway through, and all of a sudden he wanted to become a social scientist, and they said, oh, you have to have stats. He said, well, I took the high school stats class and the AP exam, and they're like, oh, perfect. What'd you get on the AP exam? He's like, I got a three. They're like, done, you passed. So, um, you know, just on and on. There's lots of different applications for this. Uh, and our book that we use and with the stuff I draw in, um, I think we find, we find that you can uh, see how stats is applied in lots of different areas. And so uh, really wide ranging topic. Calculus, uh, a little less wide ranging, let's just say. Uh, really focused in on our future science and engineering majors. Um, we spent a lot of time working on motion problems because um, when Newton invented calculus, he was trying to solve motion problems, really. Um, that's kind of uh, was the impetus behind a lot of his work. And so uh, his contemporaries at the time, Leibniz and, and a couple other guys, and Taylor and, and uh, McLaurin and stuff, were working on various things within mathematics. Uh, but Newton was a physicist primarily. And so we have a lot of physics in our AP, math, uh, our AP calculus curriculum. Um, the same thing in BC. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of the same material, but a lot more in depth on the AB side. And then there's a few things that we add at the end that are only for BC. Calculus BC actually changes names partway through the year. So second semester, it's not called Calculus BC anymore. It's called Multivariable Calculus uh, because we push on. We, we've covered everything we need for AB and BC. The AB review and the BC test usually by the end of first semester. So we push on into multivariable calculus. Uh, that son I mentioned earlier who goes to the University of Washington right now, he's actually uh, taken some more math there. And his Calc 3 class was basically what we did in multivariable. So uh, you get a nice flavor for what's coming up next in calculus um, in our second semester. Uh, so it's, it's actually two courses in one. It's Calc BC and multivariable calculus. Uh, and for those of you who are thinking about engineering as a possible uh, degree path, I would recommend calculus, the calculus sequence. If you're not thinking engineering, you're thinking finance, you're thinking business, you're thinking one of these other areas here, um, you know, I think statistics is a nice choice. Okay, now it is out of sequence. So if you want to continue on, you're going to need some of this as well. So uh, maybe you need to think about which one, um, or you can take both. There's nothing that says you can't take both. I have a number of students every year who are in both my stats class and one of my calculus classes. Um, just because it is such a nice opportunity to be able to take the statistics course. Uh, the particulars of the classes themselves, well, the grading, that's usually what everybody wants to talk about, so let's get to it. In statistics, um, we grade a little bit differently because we have so much that we can do th with data that we actually have projects and labs um, that we add in here. So 20% uh, of your grade is based on your daily work. That's your homework, basically. Um, homework is done just about every night. I would not quite as regularly as like a calculus class or your pre-calc or algebra two class, um, but pretty pretty frequently we have some kind of homework. It's a couple problems anyway. 
Um, the, we have those projects and labs, and those are because statistics is a very young science, and so it needs live data. It needs data that's happening right now. So I gather a lot of data from my classes. Um, we look at data that comes to us from the real world. Uh, you know, there's lots of data about COVID-19 and, and uh, viruses and mutations and transmission rates and things like that. Those are all based in statistics. So we will definitely look at all that stuff. Um, so that's what the projects and labs are all about. Um, we do some quizzes throughout, you know, kind of middle of the chapter quizzes. And then we have our exams, which count for 40% of your grade. Over here on calculus, I think it's something that's probably uh, you're more used to in your current math class, where 20% of it is your daily work, and then the remaining 80% of it comes from your assessments, um, which is quizzes and exams. Um, quizzes are about 30% of the grade, usually. Okay, I have it set for 30 right now. And exams are the remaining 50%. So, um, you know, we have about six exams during the uh, semester. Um, we have quizzes interjected kind of in between those. So there's about a dozen opportunities in the assessment part. Um, and then there's the daily work. And we do have homework pretty much every day uh, in calculus. I try to give time in class for that to happen. Uh, you know, this year with the distance learning has been a little different. Um, we've, get, we've had a lot more time to work on homework and class time, like working problems. So the homework's primarily been watching videos to learn the topic for the next day. Um, calculus BC uses the same exact grading rubric as AB. Uh, again, pretty much daily homework. Uh, and then um, we have, uh, like I said, about six assessments during a, during a semester for exams, and then probably uh, another six or so quizzes uh, in kind of on the opposite weeks from the exams as you work your way through. So that's the grading. Uh, I would normally say, are there any questions? But of course, this is a video, so you can't ask questions right now. If you do have more questions, though, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I would love to talk to you more about these courses and uh, answer any questions that you might have in terms of you know, how does the class work or how do you, you know, what about getting into it and those sort of things. So thank you so much for your time. Again, I'm Mr. Ray. I'm the uh, statistics and one of the calculus teachers here at Olympia High School. I'm also the head of the math department. So if you have other math questions, you could also contact me about that. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye, guys. Where's the mouse?